Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. Help our friends at Food for the Hungry save thousands of refugee lives today by considering a generous gift. A gift that will be matched 22 times. It's incredible. Visit fh.org forward slash dinner to give now. How long have you known about Michael W. Smith? Wow, a long time. I uh, actually you know, grew up with Michael's music and I remember my brothers were huge fans. In fact, I remember one time my mother took my brothers as teenagers, I was still younger, to a Michael W. Smith concert and my dad asked her how it was or something and she said, he's got the best blue eyes. <gasps> Is that all she got out of it? <laughs> I think so. But you know what? Michael is a legend, not only just for his music and his songwriting, but his kindness and his generosity. Yeah. He has been such an influential person in my life, even more than music or songwriting, because he was my first employer. He gave me my first shot in the music business and the industry uh, in Nashville years ago. And really, if I think about the links that got me to you, through it Michael. Was all, yeah. And there's one seat left at the table, and it's yours. Let's join the conversation. Feel free to eat while on camera. I'm finally we getting to do Y'all really, really eat? Yeah, we really eat. Yeah. Yeah. This is real food. Come you on. Really this is food. Food. <laughs> important. Yeah. It is. Dinner conversation. So, so think about I'm, I'm finally getting to do this. I can't believe it. I'm thrilled you're here. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love being on. You know, yours was the first cruise I'd ever been on that wasn't a Gaither cruise. That was a big step for you. That was. It's like a second one. First of all, I know there's still We had a good time. We had a blast. I had a blast. Yes. I hope you did. <laughs> but let me just tell you, that was the first cruise I'd ever, because I'd never done anything but Gaithers, because I'd never been, had a reason to go on a cruise. And the first thing I noticed when I get on your cruise, there are young people on it. Young people. I couldn't believe it. You I loved that, didn't you? Yes, I couldn't believe it. And it was a wonderful time. And the young people loved you. you yeah, I enjoyed them. You, are you finding that you're, crowd is aging with you. Yes, they are. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, it's a little surreal. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I mean, I met even a bunch of them today signing this book. You know, I grew up on your music and I heard Place in this world when I was in high school and now they're married and they have kids and they're bringing their kids to the yeah. concert. Yeah. Well, this is kind of strange. And when they're full grown and they say, I grew, I was, you know, my mother nursed me to the music. And they, you know, that's a stunning at first, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. We were talking, we were talking about with Rick, he said the first time he saw you when he was in college in 83, I was born. You know, so. We were uh, 83 is yesterday. Right. You know, when, when exactly. I, think, I graduated from college in 80. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I still feel yeah. like a clean But you blink day. and you're 60. Right. right. But when, when music, like I think about music, do you remember what first, compelled you about music or when you were first drawn to music? Um, church, mm -hmm. you know, singing, singing in church and then discovering the Beatles. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh my gosh. Then going to Davidson's record store in Huntington, West Virginia, which is 20 minutes away from Canova mm -hmm. and getting to sing while I saw her standing there <laughs> and hey Jesus and yeah. let it be. And just thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. What really? was it about? In that little 45 on the What was it record about Because my brother loved them, and I thought they couldn't sing. You know, I was into <laughs> Ella. I was Ella. into Frank. I was into, you know. Another era, I was into really? that. Uh, I was yeah. way you were born doing, late. You were listening to different stuff. Yeah, I wanted flat-footed singers. Vestal, yeah. Dottie. I mean, right. I, wanted, I liked people who could sing. And to me, the Beatles didn't sound like they were singers. But boy, now. Looking, listening to their songs, I can appreciate that part of it. Yeah. Do you really think they were good singers? I, I didn't even think what about was it. Yeah. About it was a song. It was the song. Yeah. And yeah. it was the hooks. It was okay. And they all were two and a half minute songs. A lot of them were. Yeah. And, they, and you got, you were at the hook in less than 30 seconds. Wow. I never, yeah. Yeah. So, that's something. Yeah. So, and then, you know, as I grew up through the church and singing the hymns, and then I discovered Maranatha. I discovered. Mm -hmm. Love song and Phil Kagi, and then I found out about Andre Crouch. Mm. It changed my life. Yeah, you know. And then I live at Carnegie Hall, and I had every Andre record. So, 
It was the Beatles, Elton John. Was I still mm-hmm. love the old Elton John records. Those were great songs. Was that some because you were on the piano? Piano too? player. Yeah. I was playing piano. I was going, whoa. I remember getting Captain Fantastic. I think it was the LP <laughs> that I bought. But I had Captain Fantastic and Live at Carnegie Hall all playing sort of side uh, by side. Yeah. So, but the, discovering that first in my hometown of, gosh, of all places, finding this record in like a thrift store where they sold clothes and so, sold razors and just the yeah. bizarre <laughs> array of things. And then there was a record bin, and in that record bin was this record who had this big, huge red Maranatha thing on it, and it said, The Everlasting Living Jesus Music Concert. The, and the I turned it, Everlasting, the Everlasting Living, Living Jesus <laughs> Music Concert, and I turned it over, and I knew it was all about, these songs were about Jesus, and they all had long hair, and I went, and that's what I want to do. <laughs> really, that's <laughs> what I want to do. I don't really, love, love song. Was it Honey Tree? Oh um, my! Um, the Way was another band from the whole Jesus movement. Yeah, from and, um, and Bread. What now? Bread is the second group. Wait, who was that? Was that Chris? Who was that group? <laughs> wait, wait. There, there was, was there was a yeah. group that sounded like it bread. probably like it was probably the Way or a Way. I okay. think it was the Way. Yeah. Okay, you know. Yeah, but it was. Yeah, and I don't think Phil Isn't was on that, that first thing. We but, were growing up in the same time zone, right? Yeah. We were born uh, listening days to, apart. Listening to different things. To yeah. Totally different things. I'm compelled by different things. And you know what, yes. what got my attention? I was, not to get it back on me, but uh, <laughs> I was 11, and I go to Jones Hall, Houston, Texas, and the Singing Rambos came out on stage. Mm. And I, you know, I was that independent Baptist kind of dead music. And they came out pulling against the rhythm and those Dottie Rambo lyrics. Right. That's when I said, okay, that, that got my attention before Jesus did, really. Mm-hmm. And so well, you probably couldn't listen to rock music where you did, were not allowed uh, to listen to pop music. I didn't like it. Okay, that's the reason. Yeah. No reason. No. So I it wasn't it. because someone said you could. No, I wouldn't have fit. I mean, I the message of the independent. I thought the guitars were too loud. <laughs> Let me hear the singers. Yeah. You know. Do you think now I think about you, that imagery of you thumbing through this vinyl, these vinyls in this bazaar? That there, that I thumbed through cassettes or CDs and came across a Michael cassette or CD. Yeah. And then that was something completely influential. I mean, do you think like those those parents coming this morning to the event about the release of the children's book and the children's record had the same experience you had with the Maranatha record with your yeah. records? Yeah. That that influences that long and is influencing people in the industry. There's so many touch points in our industry that you where you're the touch point. Why someone's a publicist, why someone's a songwriter. And it all comes from- the- And it's weird, isn't it? It is a little strange, it's odd. Because you don't think, you, know. you don't even notice it. Do I, mean, I, don't, I don't wake up every day and think about no, it. No, you don't. But then you hear it like I did today, and I went, God, mm-hmm. you, how awesome you are. There really is something. Yeah, nice. you know, and you just go, I never knew, you know, so it's, a, it doesn't really go to my head. To me, it's more like, thank you, God. You yeah, know, somebody who just used these songs I wrote and yeah. it changed their life forever. And, mm-hmm. and isn't it kind yeah. of good that we don't know the most it is. of it? It, it, it's probably, you know, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> because I just, just think I'm just, I'm just, yeah, yeah. just, well, believe, I think. Believe in your own press and getting puffed up oh. and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. We've all been guilty of just going, nothing Whoa. worse. How many records did I sell? My press isn't good enough <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to get so. up. Yeah, okay, think about this then, this timeline. So Rocktown Records, we talked about this, was my first job in the industry years ago, right? When I was in college at Belmont. Yeah. April Hefner was there. Yep. April Hefner was the editor of CCM Magazine way back when. I didn't have any writing experience, no journalism. She looked at my emails and was like, I think you could write. She hooks me up with CCM Magazine to write. We meet. Features on film, the same series we did mm-hmm. for CCM Magazine. Then this idea of dinner conversations. Literally, we are sitting here, the three of us, in a way, because of you. You're mentoring people without even... Which we didn't is sit the down best and, way to do it. Yeah, we didn't sit down and have a discussion about <laughs> this, you know? Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. And right now, Food for the Hungry is helping hundreds of thousands of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. Nearly one million refugees fled from their home in Myanmar to escape violent persecution. 
refugees like Nihab, who crossed the border with her husband and six children. While safe from violence, refugee camp conditions are horrific, and Nihab's children are always at risk of diseases, many of them deadly. Food for the Hungry is providing medical care and treated Nihab's three-month-old baby who fell ill with pneumonia. There are thousands more like Nihab who need our help. You can join Food for the Hungry and us in providing life-saving treatment by donating today. Even better, your gift will be matched 22 times when you give at fh.org forward slash dinner. So $25 becomes 550, 50 becomes 1100 and so on. Countless families urgently need our help. Donate to Food for the Hungry today and your generous gift will literally help save lives. It's an incredible opportunity we have, and I think of Jesus' own words in Matthew 25 when he says, what you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. So give today at fh.org forward slash dinner. And don't forget, not only will your gift be matched 22 times, but for every dollar you donate, we will enter you into a drawing for our season two grand prize giveaway. And what is the giveaway? It's dinner <laughs> with me and Andrew in Houston, Texas at my favorite restaurant. And right after dinner, we're coming back to Mark's house to be a guest on Mondays with Mark live broadcast. And your travel and accommodations are included. We also have a VIP package for everyone who gives $1,000 or more. Which includes some signed CDs, DVDs, and books from Mark and me, and also a stack of books and music from some of our season two guests, including Kathy Lee Gifford, Danny Gokey, Amy Grant, and the most special part is a handwritten... Oh, yes! I'm gonna write your favorite line, whatever it is, from Mary Did You Know, and you'll get that one, like when she kissed her little baby, she kissed the face of God. That's probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then I'll autograph that and send that to you and you can keep that. And then when I'm dead, it'll be worth two or three dollars. <laughs> so remember to give now, give generously at fh.org forward slash dinner. Every dollar is an entry into our season two grand prize giveaway. Jenny Owens, you were discovered, I hear, by Michael W. Smith. Is that right? I was. Isn't that Take so Take me crazy? back to that day. What were you doing? What was your life like? How old were you? I want to hear <laughs> that story. Well, I was just out of college. I had been searching for a job as a music teacher. I actually had a, a music ed degree and a legal teaching license, which is very surprising to many people. <laughs> Um, but I found that administrators were really kind of freaked out by the idea of hiring a visually impaired person to teach. So as I was interviewing with school staff, I also just got a normal regular day job. Um, and my job happened to be in um, basically telemarketing uh, to businesses to set up meetings for nonprofits. So it was a really terrible job for an introvert. <laughs> um, but uh, somewhere during that time, I got asked to sing in church and ended up sharing some of my songs with a local um, audio engineer who passed them on to some different folks. And one of those guys was a music publisher. And he said, I really think you have something here with some of your lyrics that you're writing. And so he kind of took me to some of his writers to write. And, and before I knew, he was just sort of sharing my music with people around town. Hmm. And so I knew I had a showcase for, well, I showcased for several labels in town. Um, and I knew I had a showcase coming up. I think it was on a Friday. And so on a Thursday, I showed up for work that morning at the time I worked at Vanderbilt University. Okay. And I remember just rolling out of bed. I had been out late the night before, rolling out of bed. And it was almost time to go to work, so I didn't wash my hair. I was like, man, I hope I don't have to see anybody important today. <laughs> and I go to work, and my publisher friend, um, who was also named Michael, Michael Purrier. Oh, he, yeah, I know Michael. You know Michael yeah. Purrier? Yeah. So Michael calls, and he says, hey, um, could you go over and sing for the folks at Rocket Town tonight? And he didn't tell me who they would be. And I was right. like, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so after... Uh, after work that day, he picked me up and we go out to Franklin. And uh, at the time, Rocket Town was in a little house um, just in downtown, in the heart of downtown Franklin. And so I, um, I go in the room and sit at the piano to sing. I meet Don Donahue, who is the president. And all of a sudden, this guy walks in and he's like, hello, I'm Michael Smith. And I was <laughs> like, how did you not tell me he was going to be here today? So um, 
I was just, I was so in awe. I didn't even really have time to be nervous. And, and Michael Purrier told me later, he, he said, I didn't want you to know because I didn't want you to be nervous. Right. So Michael um, had heard several of my songs and he asked me to play those for him. And um, I think I may have even told him that night that, um, that I didn't wash my hair. Maybe it was a few days later. I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was going to meet you today. So oh, that's it was funny. amazing. And then from there, what happened? Well, um, I ended up signing with Michael's label, Rocket Town Records. And um, just a few months later, and we ended up making the first album. And then um, Michael and he would take um, me and Chris Rice and several other artists out on the road with him. And so, you know, a lot of my first traveling experiences were, you know, flying in a with, jet <laughs> to, uh, to, to a show with Michael. Not always a jet, but that right. was definitely, um, I had a fear of flying, but that was the most comfortable way of flying. A for private sure. so, jet. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll work. And, I and, wonder if his is bigger than Gaither's. <laughs> I don't know that he has one anymore, Gaither has but, the Pinto of jets. Oh, yeah. Like, I bet Gaither's is bigger. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm pretty sure. No, I, I, so how, how has he mentored you? Has he, he's been a strong mentor to you? You know, he, he really was, especially in that season, but just throughout the years, Michael has um, just always spoken wisdom. And um, I, I remember very distinctly a time, not long after that first meeting, after I was signed, when he and I went out for lunch. Um, in fact, we out, went out for lunch several times and he would just tell me stories of where he'd been and what he had been through. And then uh, one of the really cool things that we did at Rocket Town was we would sit, especially at our at our live shows, we would sit and play on each other's music. So we would all be out instead of a concert where someone comes out first and then right. the next person. We'd all be out there on stage together with Love instruments. That. And we did some of that with Michael as well. So to learn from him in that setting where, you know, he's playing his songs, but also playing on ours and um, just sharing his heart with us. It, w it was really wonderful to, to share in that way. And um just ever since, anytime I see him, you know, we always have a, a real conversation about life and what's going on. And he, he absolutely just has a heart for, um, for sharing with the next generation all that he's learned. He's, he's a very, very wise man. So have you been able to mentor others and how's that going? I have, you know, Michael really led by example um, in that for me, but I, I've taught at Belmont University oh, uh, nice. as an adjunct professor in the songwriting department. But I also do a lot of songwriting coaching and teaching and mentoring. And um, just even around the country as I travel, I work with different younger worship leaders and, and folks who are sort of getting their feet under them as, as writers. And um, I really love just getting to pour into them, getting to encourage them and, you know, be, be a safe space for them. Because I was so thankful for, for um, all of the wonderful folks like Michael who did that for me in the beginning. And, and the folks that I can still go to, man, I still need mentorship. So it's wonderful to oh, yeah. be able to, to get that from others, to receive that from others, and then to give it as well. Have you discovered some great writers out there? Oh, I have. Oh my goodness. At Belmont, I've just, I was in awe of the talent. <laughs> really? Of our kids, yeah. We, um, we had a pretty, heavy, uh, pretty strict audition process in place in the songwriting department. So the kids that got in were just phenomenal, Wonderful. phenomenal writers. So yeah, it's, it's been really fun to see them go ahead or go on to get uh, incredible deals and write songs and, you know, How become wonderful. famous. Yeah. So you're going to sing us a song. I'm so excited to get to hear you sing in person. Oh, and man. it's a Michael W. Smith song. Which it song is. is it? It's a song called Friends. Have you heard oh, of that one? Oh, yeah. The classic. <laughs> the classic. I, I mean, I feel like the song is so timeless. I don't think I've, I feel like I've never not known this song. Although I know, you know, there right. was a time in my life when it didn't exist, but it's just, it's an amazing song. And um, so I'm, I'm honored to get to, you know, kind of do my own version now. Packing up the dreams God planted. In the fertile soil of you I can't believe the hope he's granted Means a chapter in your life is through But we'll keep you close as always It won't even seem you've gone 
Because our hearts in big and small ways Will keep the love that keeps us strong And friends are friends forever If the Lord's the Lord of them And a friend will not say never Cause the welcome will not end Though it's hard to let you go In the Father's hands we know That a lifetime's not too long To live as friends And with the faith and love God's given Springing from the hope we know Oh, we will pray the joy that you live in Is a strength that now you show And we'll keep you close as always And it won't even seem you've gone Cause our hearts in big and small ways Will keep the love that keeps us strong And friends are friends forever If the Lord's the Lord of them And a friend will not say never Cause the welcome will not end Though it's hard to let you go in the Father's hands we know That a lifetime's not too long To live as friends No, a lifetime's not too long To live as friends I love that we can get on Facebook or podcast or record. All of these are just tools. Reach the world. And I, it's really getting to where we can almost don't have to leave the house, which is good for us as we're getting older. Because really, if it's about reaching people mm -hmm. rather than touring and, you know, when you get yeah. to the place when you finally have enough money, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You know, seriously, that's what I'm thinking of yeah. is 60. Are you thinking like that at all? Are you thinking, I mean, you are, you Stay look home. good for 60. I will say that. And you probably are technically a 40 year old physically, probably. Cause you know, that all the, but I mean, you think about it, you got 20 years left maybe or 30. I think about this and not in a bad way. I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Yeah. I'm looking forward to dying. It's the only thing I really haven't done. Yeah. You know, I'm really looking forward to all these futuristic things that are going to happen. But how do you prepare for it, or do you? I mean, there's, do you ever even think about it? Or you just... um, well, I think you have to think about it on some level in terms of you got to make sure your wife's taken care of, the kids are taken care of, that sort of estate kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Man, I think my best work is yet to come. Yeah. And so... Um, Maybe I would feel different if they weren't buying the music anymore, if nobody sure. was coming to the shows. Yeah, and it sounds like you don't really want to be at home on, just on Facebook. You really like being out I like with playing, people. I like playing live. I like being with people. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel called. That's the big thing. Yeah. It's more than a job. It's a, it's a calling. And I just sense in my spirit, especially on this new tour, this Surrounded by Million Lights World Tour, it's... I don't think I've ever been a part of anything more exciting in my life. I've really? been doing this for 36 years. How is this different? I feel like the wind is at my back more than ever. And, and not in pop, popularity kind of thing. More of um, the, song, the, the songs and the, the, um, the authority. And I say that, I hold that really, mm -hmm. really loosely. And watching God just do things through me to people every night and watching people discover the Father heart of God and 
who Jesus really is, you know? I mean, somebody asked me in the Q&A the other day, going, if you have one thing to do, if you could just have one, if you have one wish, from now on in the future, just one thing to do, what would it be? And I said, I would love to have the whole world attention for 60 seconds and tell them who the real Jesus is. Who is the real Because I think he's been misrepresented. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, you know, on so, so many levels. Tell me, yeah. tell me, yeah. like how? He's a good father. Yes, he is. Yeah. Okay, father. what else? Oh, gosh, I can go on and on <laughs> yeah. and on. Well, the, you but, know, I talk I, about my dad every night in concert, yeah. you know, how, because I t tell everybody that my dad showed me a lot. I feel like what God was like. My dad had his faults. Sure. Right. I never saw sure, much sure. of him, but he was for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's for me. He's my yeah. baseball coach. And then I'm music. Then he's my PR agent, telling everybody how great I am all the time. I'm going, Dad, you gotta stop that. He said, Why not? You're the best. He would. He said that my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so you're having somebody just edify you and edify you. I think God's like that. And yeah. don't you think that helps you see God like that? Too? It does, and it makes me not worry, and it makes me not fret. I don't sit around and just. Uh, I just because I know who I am. I can wake I up every day. Sure. But you got people in the church. Probably people that have been hurt who struggle with grace. They still mm -hmm. struggle. You know, you talk about father. Like I know every night when I talk about my dad, you know, and I know there's people out there who didn't have a good dad. Right. Yeah. Right. And they didn't have a good mom. And so you just say, you know what? God can bother you. Yeah. God can mother you. My mm -hmm. mom was abandoned when she was eight years old by my real grandmother. She told him to get out of the car when she was eight. And her younger sisters, D and Pat, six and five, and Bill, four. And my real grandmother drove off and never came back. Oh, Ever. Way. This awful. Never Ever. saw her. Again. She saw her one at a time at Pat's funeral. Wow. Yeah. Uh -uh. But my mom just somehow turned a corner when she was a teenager. She mm -hmm. just, she had, I think she had a real encounter with Jesus. And mm -hmm. she thought, if I have a family one day, I'm not ever going to let that happen to my kids. You know, my mom's the bomb. I mean, she's right. just so <laughs> amazing, you know. So she turned the corner. She found out a a, a way out of the being a victim yeah. all your life. She broke the curse. She broke the, broke the curse, broke the generational things. I've heard it said like you can't truly extend grace until we've learned to receive it. Now, I agree. Is that not maybe our cultural dilemma today is yes. that we haven't learned to receive it from right. others? Or maybe, we, maybe some people have never been extended it. It's true. I don't know. I mean, so, so how do you come, you know, you, you talk about how Jesus has been so misrepresented. How through music, how do you feel like you're given the opportunity to represent better? Yes, he's a good father and to say that, but do you feel like music gives you an avenue to express some of the true characteristics of who Jesus is? I do on a, as, a, as a recording artist to be able to sing for people I'll never meet. Mm -hmm. you know? I try to sing about truth and try to sing about, you know, I, I talk about the love of God in a lot of my songs. Mm -hmm. The last song on A Million Lights is called Who You Are, and it's a it was, it's all inspired by mm -hmm. all these kids committing suicide and the bullying going on and and just this real direct thing, hey, th hey this is who you are. Mm -hmm. Think you don't have a shot. You, you don't think you have a place in this world, no pun intended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A place in this world. <laughs> yeah. But this is who you are. This is who God's called you to be. There's a, there's a, there's, you are destined for greatness, you know. So I talk about those things. Uh, on a personal level with people, I just kill them with kindness. Yeah. Yeah. Just be kind to people. Yeah, be nice. Just be nice. They go, what's up with that yeah. guy? Yeah. You know, that's they know that's hard. Hard. So I think having a father like yours and my parents, I, un, I, unconditional love was easy for me to understand. Yeah. Because I knew yep, I couldn't bring home one note too many. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love that. I, I could not, there weren't enough, uh, ham, uh, you know, they couldn't, couldn't cut down enough trees to make enough paper. No. To write enough notes to make my mother quit loving me. And I knew that. It never right. crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. it, so I think because of that, I can rest. I, be, I can believe God likes me. Yeah. First of all, he said so. Right. Second of all, how rude of me not to agree with him. Right. You know. But I uh, think that's the same for you. But what do you say to someone who's watching who didn't get that? How, you, well, you just said it, didn't you? You said, just believe it, right? Just He will father you. He will mother, mother you, whatever you, you know, need. Babe, I tell everybody every night, when, you know, if you don't have faith, I got enough faith for you. Ooh. You know, you know the, the whole, I love the story about the, the guy through the roof. Yeah. It wasn't the faith of that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the faith of his friends. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I keep coming back to like mentor mentorship, but that's kind of like the ultimate mentorship, isn't it? To have faith for someone. Where I there's love gaps that. I've never thought own. of that. 
That's in their really own good. Space. But 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 eventually, you know, I, I love you. I'll have enough for you. I tell people just choose to believe it. Yeah. You know, I think that may be kind of the same thing. Yeah. Have you found people? Have you ever had anybody come and say, "Okay, I'll take you up on that"? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. To learn more about Dinner Conversations, visit dinner-conversations.com. And while you're there, check out our Season 1 DVD with all of our past episodes and some bonus stuff, as well as check out these cool show mugs. Yeah. So when we have our next conversation, you can have coffee with us. Let's get back to the conversation. Talk about G-Daddy. Oh, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> So that's what your grandkids call you. Yeah. How did that G start? Daddy. How did you get that? Name? I got G Daddy. Um, there's something hot in that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 do you not like it? I love it, man. Some jalapenos. Oh, you yeah. like it? Sorry, I meant to tell you. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Mm. This is all organic. <laughs> this is all organic. I mean, I mean organic. I <laughs> the G Daddy thing happened when Ryan was a little over a year old trying to. To call my dad granddaddy because okay. it was going to be granddaddy. And he couldn't say granddaddy and he kept saying G daddy, G daddy. And I went, that's what I want to be called one day when all my kids, if we have, like, that's yeah. what I want to be called. And so I didn't know if it'd stick. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of, sure. you know, but I, like I didn't it. want to be grandpa. Yeah. Right, yeah. I wanted to be something. You know, G daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, cause. something that might break into a rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what and is they, grandfathering like? Or G daddying like it's awesome, you know. It's awesome. It's you know when they come over, I, I call it the beautiful chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's how many like, are there? Uh, Fourteen. <laughs> Can you believe that? And you know, and, the, and like we've had them all over, like the last <laughs> on and off, but for the most part, the last ten days, we've had a house full of kids because you know the ones that are out of town came in. There's birthdays, and it, and they're all staying at our house. We're the hotel, you know. Right. And it. And it's been fun, but whoa, man, it's like, I'm ready to get on the bus tonight. <laughs> Are you? It's like a four day ride. <laughs> you just get some sleep. Yeah. You know, but you know, but, and it's great though, but you know, you go to bed and you go, oh my gosh, what just happened tonight? You love to see them come and you love to see yeah, them go. And, but it's fun. I, but I, 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 I skew more just going to loving every minute of it. Okay, which one you like the most? <laughs> <laughs> it's only four teeth if it is. Oh, I mean, I love it. So, so who, how is that different? How has for you grandparenting been different than parenting? You can well, give them back. Yeah, you can give them back and get the house. Is it simpler? Fun. It is, definitely. Because yeah. you know. you're not really but, responsible, right? I mean. No, but you know what? I would say, I, I don't want to compare myself to other grandparents. I, 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 I will say this. We are very hands-on in a good way. That's not offensive to the kids. I mean, we're just, we're just I'm on the floor rolling around yeah. like a crazy kid. Well, yeah. You know? And Deb's like, she's, you know, she's babysitting. She's. You know, feeding the one in the high chair, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm outside throwing the ball or playing cornhole. Whatever, you're, you know? It takes a village, doesn't it? Yeah. And so um, we're just, so we're all doing stuff when we're together, yeah. which is great. So yeah. what memories? Yeah. And y'all are up fun. for it. I mean, there's yep. a lot of grandparents who are like, we had our day. Yeah. Well, starting early helps, don't you think? I mean, aren't you yeah. glad you had your kids when you're. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, if you, yeah, if you were 80 with a three year old that grandkid, might be, that's that might be a little different. <laughs> Well, let's talk be. about this. Yeah. That's, this is a CD and a book. You have gone to writing children's books. This is the first of a series, CDs. right? Yes. And it's the first in a series. Now, what, I'm sure grandkids brought this on, right? Mainly grandkids. We, I thought about it when we had kids, you know, but you're in the middle of a sort of a crazy career, and, and you know you're going to, I just, I knew I was going to do it one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. And then we kept talking about it, kept talking about it, and then I ended up, going into the studio and writing um, a, 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 a lullaby song. And I thought, that's never going, going on a pop record. Right. That's a lullaby song. That is a song that's going to put that kid to sleep. I mm -hmm. just knew it. And it's sleep tight. It was sleep tight. And then, uh, and so that, that's when I went into the, my team and said, you know, I think this is the right time. So we, it's a long story, but assembling the team. Mm -hmm. And um, Have you tried then, it out on kids yet? Oh, my grandkids love it. now. Really? Hey, I'm G Daddy, but I, I think they like. What it. age group would love this? You did it just this morning for 600 you know kids, what? right? I, everybody <laughs> thinks it's like you know six months to, to mm -hmm. two years old. My four, five, six-year-old grandkids, even seven-year-old grandkids, really? love this. So yeah. they're singable songs. Because you have characters in it, and there's, there's characters in them. it, and so and there's a lot of songs on here. 
Yeah, yeah. So how many? Good bang for your buck. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's twenty. There's twenty cuts, but there, a lot of that's dialogue. And my mm-hmm. granddaughter Harper, who just turned five, Harper, wow. she was four when she did it. She is the character. So we're trying to get. We're trying to get. Which is her character is Anna. Mm-hmm. She's named one of my girls. We're trying to get Anna to sleep. And I've been reading her book, and she. I said, Well, what? I thought you were asleep. And she says, No. She says, I need the nighty nights. I went, The nighty nights. You know, just turn on my nightlight. And then all of a sudden, all these sound effects, you know, and, and all of a sudden, I don't know, what's happening? And all of a sudden, these characters, Eddie Bear, Sandy Lammy, and Sleepy Puppy, come to life and <laughs> oh. start singing, We are the Nighty Nights. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this wow. crazy song. And, and then it's just a wild. And that's what's on the that, That's the lullaby record. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, the, bo- and then the book was uh, Thank God for Veggie Tales and thank God for Mike Naraki. Yeah, you know, Mike was Larry the mm-hmm. Cucumber, mm-hmm. and oh. Mike really came up with these adorable characters. And so and did he the draw all this? He, no, he, but he came. He, but he but he came up with much of the story, for, the story for the book. Oh, yeah. okay. So he's just so talented, and wow. the the person who obviously did the drawings. You know, all, it's all kinds of stuff that I don't have to think about making pop records, but you have to think about yeah. what's the colors, mm-hmm. how soft are they. Yeah, can be too bold. Put a kid to sleep. Too bold. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. get a kid to sleep, you know, and so it's just a, it's a really been a, a, a good education for me to kind of understand that world. So it's what, like continually it, evolving. I mean, why is this important out of all your projects, you know, that go on and that you've done? Why now? Is I this think important? I'm pouring into the next generation. You know, I think there's something about bedtime, and I've known this from reading books to my kids, and now reading books to the grandkids. Something sacred about Mm-hmm. That final moment before they mm-hmm. doze off, that you are depositing something into them that's pure and beautiful and, and godly. And this is Sleep Tide from the Lullaby Record. save thousands of lives by giving a generous gift to Food for the Hungry today. Your gift will directly help Rohingya refugees who are currently living in dire, poverty-stricken refugee camp conditions in Bangladesh. And get this, your gift will be matched 22 times for an exponential impact. Food for the Hungry is on the ground now providing medical treatment to hundreds of thousands of these vulnerable children and their families. 
This is the example that has been set for us by Jesus, that we would help our neighbors in their time of need. And this is what Food for the Hungry is doing to help relieve the refugee crisis in Bangladesh. So you can give today, partner with Dinner Conversations as we partner with Food for the Hungry yes. by giving generously at fh.org forward slash dinner. What is the theme of this? Just get to sleep? The whole thing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who doesn't want to get their kids to sleep? Oh, I agree, right. I agree, but I was just, well, each one have a theme. Yeah. Each one have a theme. Yeah. Is it is teaching the kids something through it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the third one, you know, we might be, you know, I'm sure we'll do a Christmas one sure. at some point, yeah. you know, but. Will you do Mary to Jim? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm, that's already but on please. the set list. It's already, it, I can just has, it, has it not already been cut? Not I enough. Know, I know. Child, yeah, has, has, when you only got one, you got to get everybody to cut it. You got okay. so many songs. Why? Okay. We're going to put it on the list. Good. Yeah. Okay, so Sandy Sandy Lamb. Lamb. Sandy Sandy makes the cut. You've done children's <laughs> books. You've done pop records. I bet you didn't. Did you see that coming? I mean, weren't you doing Christian records and the pop thing happened, or what happened? Or were you going for the pop thing? You know, I just wanted to make pop music and you did. sing about Jesus okay. and sing about my faith. The, 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 but go, the place in this world sort of happened, you know, somebody at Geffen Records, when, we were, when Reunion Records was parting with Geffen Records. And I remember writing, when I wrote Place in this World, when I even wrote the music, I, I remember just thinking, I think this is a hit song. And I, I don't say that like very often and because it, and it, it sounds like it's egotistical. I, I just felt like there was something special about the melody. <clears throat> and then when Wayne and Amy, Wayne Kirkpatrick and Amy, I brought them in to write the lyric. It was inspired Amy by... Yeah. Amy, <laughs> Amy, <laughs> Amy. <laughs> And it was inspired by all these letters I got from kids that were just going, I'm, I just want to take my own life. I just oh, don't, I, I don't, I don't have anything to live for. And I think in one of those letters, a girl said, I'm just trying to find my place in this world. Wow. Yeah. And That's so we came. wrote it. So then when we played the record for Geffen, you know, just like, hey, you know, we just want to know about the record. And then it's Claire Parr now who's working for me, and she, she was the radio promotions girl at Geffen. We were in a restaurant in L.A., all the Geffen team, and we're sitting there talking, and she looked at me, she says, you got a hit song on this record. It was the Go Wash Your Man record. And I said... I know. <laughs> you do it. I can't believe I said that. I said, I didn't mean to say that. And I said, well, what is it? She said, place in this world. I said, I think it is too. I don't know how to do all that. And she says, I'm going to fight for the song. Mm -hmm. And so she fought, 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 and almost lost her job. Really? Just because she was paying so much attention. And back then it was trying to get the bullet. Get the bullet, yeah. get the ad, because if you get the ad, you get the bump in the chart and just like, Wow, there's crazy. a lot of oh, stuff to it. Crazy. Isn't? And then you parried it. Does that make you... Yeah, yeah he was in Did it. that substantiate uh, it? He was yes. in the was that, It became even bigger when... Oh, uh, you know it did. My hairline's moving, but I am standing still. A chin like Leno's, nose big as a hill. A face that's perfect is always in my dreams. Hope they can fix mine without too many scenes. That's why I'm looking for a surgeon who work overtime to find my face in this world, my face in this world, not a lot to work with, I need his knife to help me find my face in this world, my face in this world. Changes. I want Smitty's kind of chin All the girls will love my Stephen Curtis Chapman grin Give me Carmen's eyebrows But a bit more overgrown I'll be a vision A face almost my own That's why I'm Looking for a surgeon who work overtime to find.
find my face in this world My face in this world Not a lot to work with But I need his knife to help me find my face in this world My face in this world That video used to scare some of my younger kids. That video did? <laughs> because I die in the video. Oh, oh that's right. I get run over by a car. Oh, no. Which, <laughs> when your kids were little, they were just, go dad. <laughs> I think it Uncle was, I, th I think it was Hannah. We don't like dad, Uncle Mark. I don't want to watch that video every kid. Oh, that's something. <laughs> that's funny. I have one more question. For yes. You. When we think about, um, you talking about your dad and talking about him every night and as a way of, um, really mentoring others in the gospel. You know, we talk about your dad's love for you. Your dad's been gone two and a half years. Two and a half years. Is, is that still a point of grief for you? You know, I'm, I'm, um, I, mean, I think about him every day. Mm -hmm. um, you were close. I don't really, oh, I've been really, really close. Um, I think I'm cried out. I mean, every once in a while, I'll just have a sort of um, a moment driving in the car. Um, I think I'm cried out, but mm -hmm. the, I'm not saying my, the tears are not over. You know, I wrote a song for my dad on the on the Million Lights record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, called Footsteps. Yeah, and um, it's a uh, fun song. You yeah. know, it's not a ballad. You, know, you mm -hmm. usually write songs for your girlfriend, <laughs> right. your boyfriend, or your parents, and they're all sad and everybody right. cries. And this is kind of a Smitty meets Ed Sheeran kind of a pop <laughs> thing. You know, oh, and I sing it every night, and I love it. I said, I said, this is for my dad. Uh -huh. And they love it. It was so fun, you know, because the whole song's about just, you know, uh, as long as I can see your footsteps, I'm all right. Uh -huh. So he kind of really showed me how to do life, the way he loved my mom, the way he loved my sister and I, the way he loved my kids and my grandkids, and his reputation was impeccable. I mean, just everybody knew my dad and mm -hmm. everybody loved my dad. Oh, you know, and working in the homeless shelter and everything, you know, so that's what, so that was my dad. So it's like big shoes to fill, you know, but he taught me how to do life. He, he just showed me the way and he didn't say, he didn't, it wasn't a whole lot of like, da, 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 and give me all this destruction. It's just, he lived the life and I watched what he did. I went, I want to be like now, that. Now, did he die suddenly or? No, he had dementia. So you, oh, same as mama. Yeah. Yeah. So you saw him, really, he died twice. He's yeah, he still remembered, he still knew who I was, oh, which really? I was wow. really surprised. Mm -hmm. He still, that's good. He still knew who I was. And um, yeah, he, um, he crossed over to the other side. I was on a plane on the way back from Tokyo. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a long, crazy story, but whatever. I was there to sing, and I felt like I was supposed to stay for a day. And I said goodbye to my dad on the phone. Yeah, I knew that. You know, when people are dying and getting ready to sort of cross over, you know, they kind of wait for that last mm -hmm. relative, you know. And I remember looking at my dad. I was FaceTiming my dad, and I could just tell he was, at that point, he was starting to be a bit co non coherent. You know, he just, and, but I knew he could hear me. I'm going, Dad, I said, don't, don't wait on me. 
I said, I release you. And I said it five times, and I'm just a mess. I'm bawling in this, cl I this club. You said it five times. I said it five times. I release you. I release you, Dad. I release you. You've been a great dad. Oh. And um, yeah, I can't believe I'm telling this and not crying. So I usually do. I usually lose it. But mm. and then um, Deb and I got on the plane, and about three hours into the flight, he crossed over. So, so what a life, man. What a how old was he? Eighty-two, almost eighty-three. And He's just be like eighty-three in about three weeks. Think about it. Still through music, still every night in concert. And you, his yeah. legacy living through you is G Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever think about what he's doing? I just, I'm just trying to. Oh, well, I'm sure he went up and said hi to Billy Graham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think about that yeah. stuff. You of all might, the people that I knew, that my dad actually met Billy. I'd introduce because I was really close to Billy. Yeah. But you know, I'd introduce dad, my dad, to Billy a couple times at his home a long time ago. But I think all these points when you say all these things, it ties together. Yeah, yeah. I'm sh I know. I know my dad went and said hi to Mrs. Bush. Oh, I know well, he did. Or she, she went and said, yeah. I just, I believe that. Maybe you don't know I do that. too. I believe You know what my dad does sometimes when he prays? When he, over dinner, I'll hear him, he'll say, Lord, pull, pull uh, my mom, his mom, he said, pull mom out of the crowd and put an arm around her and tell her I love her. Oh. And he said, don't you know she's stunned when Jesus pulls her out of the crowd? He believes <laughs> it. I mean, he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah I love it well I think about you know I haven't really grieved my mama had dementia for three years and I thought well when she finally went when daddy called and said your mama died and we weren't expecting it dementia doesn't necessarily kill you you mm -hmm. know it just you take so she's only three years into it when the Lord let her come home mm -hmm. with a heart attack mm -hmm. but when I heard she died it's like someone hit me in the stomach you mm -hmm. know for an initial and I caught myself crying mainly for my dad yeah. Because 62 years they were married. and Long time. And he adored her. and uh, But then I thought, man, she's kicking up gold dust. I'm looking at these people. What Let let her grieve. Why are, it, we've got it backwards. If we could really get a, if what we believe is true. Yeah. What, you know, and I say that because I'm a Christian agnostic. I believe a lot, but I know nothing, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't have any proof. Yeah. But I believe yeah. that they're kicking up gold dust. I believe the Bible's true and all that, on that stuff. So why should we grieve? But I, but we do. Yeah. I think it's kind of us longing for what we know we were created for. To be I think that. I think it is missing that space, but it's almost, in my mind, it's like, I wish I was, I wish I was in your shoes. I wish I got to go. Yeah, I think if yeah. she's on a road trip, be she'll home. be back. Yeah. That's where I've, I've yeah. I don't know if it's psychologically crazy, but, and I, I think when she comes back, she'll be on a white horse, but she is coming back. Yeah. I think know? maybe the grief is for ourselves. It's like, I think they it get is. to be with I God. Mean, it's like, it's Cause like, it's so final here. You it's know? final here. And I don't get to see my dad here. Yeah. Mm -mm. I miss being my dad. You know, I'm, I'm not ever going to talk to my dad, have a face to face conversation until. Mm -hmm. But I either he comes back or I cross yeah. over. So, so, so you will. It's, it's the new norm. Yeah, so you have to too. sort of like get mm -hmm. the new norm where it's now I'm taking care of my mom. Yeah. Make sure, make sure my mom's okay. How is she? So she's doing good. Yeah. How's her mental? Doing okay. She forgets a few things, but so do I. So do I. <laughs> Are you funny? Have you walked into a room yet and wondered why am I in here? Like I go to get something and then I forgot why I go. I, in yeah, I've done that. Have you? Yeah. 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 It's more just forgetting people's names sometimes, you know. So, okay, you've done books, you've done CDs. <laughs> what, is there anything left to do? Have you want us to go skydiving? Is no, there anything not gonna, else? Not going to skydive. We got to wrap. Oh, we got to get wrap. You You're going to dream until the yes. day you die. Yeah. This is going to be. What's that yeah. mean? Oh. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Oh, you're oh, right. Right. Oh, 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 do you need some friends to sing on it with you? Yes. Will you come sing? Will you sing Amy's part? But we'll keep you close as always. It won't eat. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Okay, just kidding. Take two. Take take two. Okay, here we okay. go. Is that how she got out of it? Yeah, I think so. You know. <laughs> Is that all she got out of it? Yeah. <laughs> oh.
What are we, punch drunk? Is that what they call it? <laughs> well, we sure hope you've enjoyed this episode with Michael W. Smith. An old friend. Old friend. Yeah. <laughs> friends are friends forever. Yep. You can also find his new record, Awaken, through the Amazon affiliate links in our episode description. And if you want to binge watch the entire season two of Dinner Conversations, you can do that right now on Amazon Prime. So thanks for watching Dinner Conversations with Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer. Turning the light on. One question at a time. Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Food for the Hungry, a relief and development organization serving those in need around the globe for more than 40 years. Help our friends at Food for the Hungry save thousands of refugee lives today by considering a generous gift. A gift that will be matched 22 times. It's incredible. Visit fh.org forward slash dinner to give now.